What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Alice Greenwald, President and CEO of the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. And I want to thank you all for joining us here today on this misty day. In 1993, it was snowing. So I guess we should be grateful for the weather we have. It is my distinct honor to welcome you as we pay tribute to the six innocent people who were killed, including a pregnant woman, and the over 1,000 who were injured in the first attack on the World Trade Center 27 years ago today. 27 years, and we have not forgotten. At the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, it is both our duty and our privilege to preserve the history of this horrific event, to honor and remember the six individuals whose names are inscribed in bronze on the panels next to us to stand in solidarity and shared grief with their families and friends, to recognize the endurance and the courage of those who survived, and to honor the brave men and women who risked their lives on that day, subjecting themselves to danger to save others. The date of February 26 will be etched forever in our memories. And so each year we gather here at this sacred place to pay tribute to those who were killed, showing our support for those who grieve, as well as for those who endured the terror firsthand in this unthinkable act. I want to thank Rick Cotton, Executive Director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, for joining us today. The Port Authority and its staff have been stalwart leaders and champions of rebuilding and renewal here at this site. Their steadfast commitment to remembrance, continued demonstration of resilience, and unwavering support have been inspiring to us all. Rick, please join me at the podium. Thank you, Alice. Uh, we are here to mourn and to remember those who perished 27 years ago, and we are here to join with their family members and with many of the Port Authority executive staff and Port Authority employees who are here today. I want to begin by recognizing uh, Alice Greenwald as director 
and her colleagues in terms of the extraordinary job they have done and are doing in operating and maintaining the memorial, the museum, and the glade. It is truly a place of remembrance for us all. I'm here to represent the thousands upon thousands of employees of the Port Authority, both present and past, who I can assure you stand with you in remembering and in dedicating in our thoughts all that we do to rebuilding and to bringing an energy to the organization and to our facilities in memory and in honor of those who perished on that day. I'd also like to remember the more than 1,000 people who were injured, including our brave first responders. The resilience of those who lived through the tragic events of that day in 1993, many of whom were also forced to experience the subsequent 9-11 attacks, is a testament to the strength of our humanity and our community. I'd also like to present, <clears throat> in closing, a letter from the governor of New York. It is addressed to the memorial and museum in the name of the families. Dear friends, I am honored to send greetings to those gathered to commemorate the 27th anniversary of the 1993 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. As we remember and honor the individuals who perished that day, mindful of current atrocities still being carried out in the world, we deepen our resolve to be vigilant and to stand strong in the face of terror and evil. We will never forget those we lost in 1993 or on September 11, and the brave first responders, firefighters, and police officers who self selflessly ran towards smoke and flames. Your observance will serve as a long-standing symbol of respect for those who died that cold February day 27 years ago. I offer my deep appreciation to everyone at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey who have made this tribute possible so that we may continue to honor the memory of those who died as well as the indomitable spirit of all Americans. Signed, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you so much, Rick. It is indeed an honor to accept such an eloquent message from the governor. On February 26, 1993, Charlie Makish was the director of the World Trade Center Department at the World Trade Center at the Port Authority. Following the attack, he served as the senior executive in charge of recovery and rebuilding at the site. Each year, on February 26, Charlie joins us here to remember and to reflect, and it is truly an honor to have him with us for this day of solemn commemoration, Charlie Makish. <clears throat> Thank you, Alice. The story of February 26th needs to be constantly retold because its lesson is, is lived by us every day. 200 feet south of where we stand today and 20 feet down, 27 years ago and unprecedented in our history, foreign terrorists exploded a 1,600-pound bomb, killing six adults and an unborn child, seriously injuring thousands of others and making victims of us all. This paraphrases the inscription on the 93 Memorial Fountain, which was destroyed on 9-11. The blast not only created a, a crater half the size of a football field, the blast wave horizontally destroyed everything in its path, sending smoke and soot up the towers and some of the adjacent buildings, rendering 10 million square feet of commercial office space the size of downtown Cleveland. Soot and smoke laden. In essence, the Trade Center was disemboweled of its operating and life safety systems, flooded at its base, covered with soot and smoke, but its structures and its people largely survived. The restoration and recovery of the World Trade Center was nothing short of miraculous. 
It demonstrated the resiliency and the determination of the people of the New York region. The message was to demonstrate our resiliency and don't let the terrorists disrupt our way of life, a return to normalcy. The two states committed their full resources, the city pledged its assistance, and the Port Authority Board, unprecedented, authorized us to take any and all actions required for the full restoration and recovery of the World Trade Center. What happened next was miraculous. Our mantra was full restoration of the Trade Center as soon as possible to demonstrate that we would not be terrorized. The restoration of the operating space and the systems was led by my deputy, Bob DiCiara, and the facilities manager who is present here every year as well and still works for the Port Authority, the ever-present Alan Reese. We marshaled an army of over 4,000 people. All of New York and New Jersey pitched in. The PA provided the leadership, the engineering, and the project management. The labor unions came together as a team. Absolutely no labor disputes. Carpenters were carrying steel. Iron workers were cutting wood. Electrician and plumbers were pushing brooms so they could get to their work. Labor is carrying furniture. People did whatever was required to be done. By the night of February 26th, the towers stood lit again against the night sky. By that weekend, the path service was opened to the Trade Center, and by that Monday, the perimeter buildings reopened largely with temporary power and temporary life safety systems. On March 19th, three weeks later, after the bombing, we moved the first tenant back into the World Trade Center. It was Governor Mario Cuomo into Tower 2. The museum has the artifacts and tells the story of the return. All who responded and restored the Trade Center came together as a family. Excuse me. Excuse me just a minute. It's stuck together because it's wet. I apologize. As you enter the museum, you will see the timeline from the 93 bombing to the 9-11 attack and the destruction of the World Trade Center. By the way, Alice, thank you very much on behalf of the families for making this day possible for them and for all of us that were so injured by, nine, by the uh, uh, 93 bombing. On behalf of the families and the placement of the roses, thank you. As you enter the museum, you will see the timeline from the 93 bombing to the 9-11 attack and the destruction of the World Trade Center. The same people, the same objective, the destruction of our free, open, and democratic society. If we are forever vigilant, they will not succeed. 9-11 was not the commencement, but the culmination of an attack that was launched on February 26, 1993. I would now ask Nicole Rossley and uh, Sabrina Knapp to join me on stage now. They are the granddaughters of Steve Knapp to lead, to lead the reading of the names. I'll see you all same place next year. John D. Giovanni, Robert Kirkpatrick, our grandfather Stephen A. Knapp, William Macko, Wilfredo Mercado, Monica Rodriguez Smith, and her unborn child, Eddie Smith. Thank you, Nicole and Sabrina. I'd now like to invite the two of you and any other family members of those killed 27 years ago to lead us in laying roses at the names of your loved ones. Once the families have laid their roses, I invite survivors of the 1993 bombing, first responders, and all guests who wish to do so to join in this same gesture of tribute, which marks the end of our commemorative program. I want to thank you again, all of you, for being with us today to observe this anniversary.